Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new week. Uh, right, let's begin this time, the word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful week, oh God. We thank you for, Lord, your grace and your mercies, your abundant joy that you bestow upon each one of us. And Lord, even as we begin this new week, we look forward to learning from your word. Holy Spirit, we ask that you open our hearts, that we may hear what you have to say to us, O oh God. And even as we study this subject, I pray, God, that you will give us clarity, that you will give us a clearer vision for everything that is in store for us ahead, O oh God. We come at this time into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, let's get into today's class. Uh, last week, I uh, just want to do a quick review of what we did last week. Last week, we looked at chapter one, where you and I were made for a purpose, and we are called to discover that purpose. We're called to live that purpose, which God has for us. And uh, we looked at a few important points. First one was the foundation, meaning even as we pursue discovering what God has for our lives, or even if we know what you know God has planned for our lives and we are working on it. First thing is the foundation. What we build on really matters. Uh, so good foundations is very important for our professional life and for our personal life, right? So setting up those foundations at an early age is really helpful. Um, and then we also looked at Developing a life plan, reviewing it, planning, and uh, continuously looking at that plan which God uh, puts in your heart. Now, we looked at last week that you know we can make a one-year plan, we can make a five-year plan, a ten-year plan. Uh, it's good to plan, right? And even as we plan, remember that God is able to make those changes within the plan. So we are not to, you know, say, no, this is what only thing that I'm going to do. Uh, but God along the course will help us to develop that life plan. And we looked at three important points. The person that God wants us to be, the place that God wants us to be, and the purpose that God has for us. Right? Uh, we looked at insights from Genesis 12, uh, from the life of Abraham, when God told Abraham, you will be a father of a great nation as a person that he's going to be. Then he says to him, you will inherit a land that I will give you. And that land will be flowing with milk and honey and all of those things. That's the place that God wanted Abraham to be. And then he ends that whole uh, calling by saying, you will be a blessing to, the, to your families and to the nation and the nations. That was the purpose. So even in each of our lives, God has a plan for our life, a place that he wants us to be in, and a purpose for our life. And we looked at that, right? Uh, the person that he wants us to be uh, is to be a child of God. And also in, when we took a look about the natural aspect, God wants us to, you know, fulfill the call that he has for us it could be the place could be a geographical place or in the professional field wherever he wants us to be uh, and then the purpose again is to give glory to god is to build god's kingdom uh, and so we closed on that let's look at chapter two this morning a career plan now many of us are young we've got a life ahead of us and we may have many plans, right? Uh, uh, you know, before COVID, uh, maybe some of us have written our plans and we've kept it aside because of uh, the pandemic and all that has happened. Uh, but having a life plan, a career plan is very important. Right? Maybe some of you are already in the ministry. Maybe some of you are looking out for a corporate job or you want to start your small business, right? Now, remember, we started the session saying that just because you're in the corporate or just because you're a teacher or a, a working in the government sector does not mean you're not in ministry. You are in ministry, right? Uh, and so this applies to everyone, even those in ministry. 
uh, we can't say, okay, you know, I'm a pastor, so my career is over, my plans are done. This is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. No, even as a pastor or an evangelist or a, a preacher, we have to plan ahead, right? So having a life plan includes many areas, right? Let's look at a few of them. First one, spiritual life, right? Uh, always remember that as we plan for our career, it all needs to be, the foundation needs to be a good spiritual walk with God. Two, personal, uh, personal health, education, profession, family, finances, uh, 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 ministry. Uh, all these are part of career planning. Right? Now, as we plan for our career, Know your grace, know your gifts, and know your skills. Right now, uh, I'm sure you've studied this in uh, fulfilling God's purpose for your life, where we looked at, you know, our plans, our calling, and our gifts always go together. Right, it's like a railway track. Uh, if this is our calling, God will also gift us in that area. Now, we may not know we are gifted in that area. But as we continue to plan and step out and do what God has called us to do, uh, along the way, we will realize, hey, I'm good at this. I think I can do this. I think God has given me this gift, which I didn't even know all these uh, years. Let me give you this example. You know, uh, after the pandemic, uh, a lot of our students in church, they, they went back to their hometowns. And so we were opening up auditions for singing uh, vocalists right? uh, so I remember talking to this uh, uh, this uh, girl in the church and uh, she said you know uh, I, I don't mind serving in all these different areas and I said uh, can you sing she said no I never sang before uh, you know I just sing maybe at home so I said why don't you sing I want to hear you sing and so she sang and she sang so well I said, why don't you audition for the worship team? Uh, she said, okay, give me a few weeks. Uh, I've never done this. I've never gone on stage. I've never, uh, you know, I, I never consider myself as a good singer. But then she came prepared for the audition and she sang really well. And she sang parts and she sang the melody, the sopranos, the tenor. And she did really well. And I, and I told her, you know what? God has gifted you in this area. And she said, really, I, mean, I, I don't know. I didn't know. I, I, mean, I just thought I can sing at home. Uh, but, but I made her understand that, you know, the way that you're singing, God has called you to serve in this area. So sometimes we may not even know, but along the line, God may bring people or God may, uh, you know, give you opportunities in areas where we may not be comfortable in. Then we realize, hey, maybe God has called me for this as well. He's given me the gift. He's given me the grace. And then when we realize that God has given us the grace, God has given us this gift, we are to empower ourselves, we, which means we are to improve our skills and what we have. Right? Uh, okay, I, uh, for example, you, know, you can play the keyboard. Now we know that God has gifted you in that, but there's this practical aspect of sitting down and practicing and learning. Now, that is our responsibility. And that's a skill that we have to develop, right? So uh, the reason God has given us the gifts and the grace is so that we can do something meaningful for God's kingdom, right? Skills are abilities uh, and knowledge we develop through training and discipline and practice. For example, you know, some of you, some of us may feel, hey, uh, you know, I still need to learn a lot of these uh, technical aspects of you know working, uh, maybe the software aspects of uh, you know computers and all of that. Uh, it's, if if God is calling you towards that, you feel a nudge. There will be things that we have to do. We have to prepare ourselves. We need to uh, learn. We need to discipline ourselves. We need to train ourselves, go for classes, whatever we have to do. Uh, but together, as we faithfully 
operate in our areas of grace, exercise our gifts, God increases the grace. Now remember, gifts can mature, gifts can grow, skills can develop. Uh, I remember this first time, I think I've shared this with you. First time I was uh, asked to lead worship, I was so nervous. God, I've never done this before. And, uh, you know, it, it was so nervous. I was so nervous. I, I didn't know, uh, you know, during the practice, everything was fine. But then on the Sunday morning, I saw the people and uh, I got so nervous that to a point that when I went on stage, my mind was blank. I didn't know what was the song list. I didn't know what are the five songs I'm going to sing. Oh, uh, my mind was completely blank. Uh, what are the chords? Uh you know the the whole dynamics of the songs i completely forgot everything right because god gave me the grace to somehow go through those sessions but as the years passed on as we kept doing this uh, you know you know, week after week month after month gifts mature skills develop and so the same way even in our careers wherever god has called you Take small opportunities. Don't despise those smaller opportunities. The Bible very clearly teaches us, do not despise meager beginnings. So, for example, if God has called you to, you know, uh, be a preacher, if you get an opening in Sunday school, you know, teaching in Sunday school, don't despise it. Don't say, hey, who's going to teach children? I want to teach, you know, adults and, you know, the uh, I know so much from the word. No. Take small steps, take baby steps. And as you do that, God will give you the grace to increase. Gifts will increase. And then we will develop new areas of gifts, gifting. Right? All of a sudden you'll realize, hey, um, you know, I'm able to prepare sermons or I'm able to write songs. Uh, or if you're a musician, I'm able to come up with uh, melody to the words that I'm writing. And so, very important is to use those gifts and use those uh, you know skills that God has given us. Now, what happens when we don't use it? Right, we are suppressing the gifts that God has given us. We're saying God, uh, you know, it's like God is giving us a gift, and we are saying, no, I don't want to use it. Right, uh, but God has given us that, and we are to use those gifts for for our benefit and to bless others, right? So, uh, secondly, explore opportunities, right? Uh, get input, draw up a plan. Which means, let's read Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14, right? Proverbs 11, verse 14. Yes, could one of us please read that? Uh, Proverbs 11, 14, it's in your notes. Proverbs 11, 14. Where there is no counsel, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Amen. Thank you, Samuel. What a powerful verse. Where there is no counsel, the people fall. Right? Uh, in, in some versions, it says, where there is no counsel, the plans fail. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So, even as you begin your, maybe you're already, you know, in what God wants you to do, or you're looking at a future, you're planning to start a career, right? Explore opportunities, get input, right? When I say get input, ask leader, ask people, uh, ask elders, right? Draw up a life plan, uh, meaning you write down, what do you want to do? Uh, well, five years from now, 10 years from now, what, what do you want to be, right? Draw up a plan. Uh, now, begin to explore opportunities to align yourself to the life plan which God has given you, right? Um, so if it's in the IT company or uh, if it's in government sector, if it's arts and entertainment, whatever that God has called you for, begin to look for opportunities. Now, remember, Opportunities, you know, won't always come to you, to your doorstep and say, okay, here, here's your opportunity. No. If it does happen, that's wonderful. Praise God for it. Right? But very unlikely. There are times we need to go and explore opportunities. We need to go and look for 
uh, you know, plans and uh, uh, draw plans, get input from people. I remember this in the year 2012, right? Uh, uh, early 2012, uh, one of our locations was APC East, which is in uh, the area of east of Bangalore. And um, we, we, we didn't have that location yet. Uh, but there was a group of uh, our church folks. We all, uh, you know, uh, uh, pastor had decided that we will start a church there. But I love what happened after that. We, you know, there was a team of people who started with prayer, right? Uh, so for six months, they would meet, sit together every week and pray. Uh, sing a few songs, look at the word for a few minutes, and then spend most of the time in praying, right? Uh, now, east of Bangalore has a lot of... Um, you know, uh, IT companies, it's an IT belt, that side, uh, huge IT companies. And uh, because of those IT companies, huge apartments have come that side. And so we thought that would be a wonderful place for us to start a church because you got the IT people and you got uh, apartments there, people living close by, they prefer to uh, look at a church close by. And so uh, we started off somewhere, I think it was 2012, September, right? But before we started off, there was a lot of planning involved, right? A lot of, we looked for opportunities in different places. We got input from different uh, leaders, from our pastoral team, and then we started it. And it was wonderful because even now the church is growing so wonderfully. I, I would say the reason is because we, we, the planning was done right. Nothing was done in a hurry, right? No, it was done prayerfully planned prayerfully and you know we we put inputs together and together uh, god enabled us to plant that church there it's a wonderful uh, way that god uh, you know used that uses that uh, apc east church uh, ministering to people in that side of the city so what am i trying to get at when when we can't sit around and say i'm not i don't have an opportunity no we need to step up, right? We need to go out. We need to step out and say, okay, this is what I want to do. Uh, this is God help me to, uh, you know, prepare well for this, uh, what is ahead of me, right? Now, in the early stages, uh, even before we start off, or even as we've just begun, get to know what kind of opportunities are ahead, right? Uh, so if you're joining, if you're starting a business, right, uh, explore those opportunities. Now, uh, you know, recently a young man, uh, he had called me and he asked me, uh, what do you think about the stock market? Should I, uh, you know, invest in the stock market? So I told him, see, I don't know much about the stock market. I don't really read about it, uh, uh, right? Uh, but I, one of the things I... Uh, just advised him was go ahead do some research don't be in a hurry to just invest do some research uh you know take a few months uh, think about it research pray over it and if god is leading you towards it go ahead and do what whatever it is so uh get to know right what is what what you're stepping into uh, how do you do that read research online talk to people who are experienced or even volunteer in different areas Right. Um, I, I remember this uh, in 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 our in Mangalore. There's this uh, young student, young man. He said uh, he wanted to be, you know, something to do with uh, helping out. Uh, he wanted to work as an in an, an NGO, uh, but he said, "I want to start my own NGO. Can you help me with that? Uh, meaning, can you give me some inputs and all of it?" So I remember telling him. Uh, uh, you know, as you plan to start an NGO, that's good. Uh, but why don't you serve in an NGO first? Right? You may not get any money. They may not, you know, give you money for serving there. But when you serve there, you will, you know, you will get insight. You will be able to explore opportunities. You will learn uh, how an NGO works and uh, what are the things that you need. And, you know, it's going to help you, develop you. So he finishes his college, 
uh, and then after college, he goes and he serves uh, in an NGO. Now, what is the bigger picture? He wants to start his own NGO uh, in another city, in his hometown. But now what is he doing? He's preparing himself. He's learning uh, how an NGO works. What are the things that are involved, uh, you know, in terms of even, you know, documents and uh, legal aspects, everything that's in, he's learning everything. So he's really excited about it. So when we plan, look for opportunities, get input from people. Proverbs 15, 22 says, without counsel, plans go awry, but in the multitude of counselors, they will be established. Right? Now, I'm not saying you make a plan and tell everyone in this world, no. Sometimes you make a plan, you just tell people who you feel will be able to pray for you, who will be able to give you some insights, right? Uh, don't make a plan and tell everybody about it, right? Of course, you can share it with your family uh, and your know, close ones, uh, but don't make it <laughs> like a big news, right? Uh, plan, take it step by step, right? Uh, I remember this man uh, I spoke to a couple of years ago, uh, he came to me and he said, uh, you know, uh, please pray for me because I'm in a huge debt uh, of over uh, one crore odd. I said, one crore, what happened? So he began to tell me what happened. Uh, he wanted to start a small business, right? So he needed that initial capital, the initial amount. Uh, and in a hurry, he said, he, he, the exact words he said was, you know, I was in a hurry to become rich. Uh, you know, he was so sure that that, you know, a company, that small business that he was going to start with, he did his research, he did everything. Uh, but he's in a hurry. What he did was because of that capital to start the business, he sold his house. After selling his house, he started the business and the business went nowhere. Unfortunately, he went into a huge loss. The money went away. He has no house. He's got a loan on the house. He has no roof under his head. And it was very sad to hear his story. Uh, you know, I just prayed for him and asked the Lord to grant mercy upon him. But here's the thing. If we, without counsel, without people's advice, Right. When I say people, I mean people in leadership or people full of wisdom who you feel can give you good advice. Without advice, plans will go awry. Right? It's important to take a counsel, take advice from people. Right Now, when you get these opportunities, when you get things coming your way, you can outline your career plan. Right? Uh, remember, life is lived in seasons, right? I'm sure all of us can testify of this, right? Life is lived in seasons, and there's always a transition, one, one season to another season to another season. We were all students maybe in school, and then we passed on that season. Then we went into college. The college season may be over. Then we began working, which was another season. On the other hand, we were maybe, we, we were youth, and then we got married and responsibilities. Then we have children, additional responsibilities, right? So life is lived through seasons, right? There is a season for everything. There's a season, you know, uh, Ecclesiastes uh, is very clear there. There's a, there's a time for joy. There's a time for mourning. There's, uh, and, and, and he brings out the whole aspect of seasons. At the right time, at the right season, God will bring you to the right place. When we, you know, plan and surrender our plans to God, right? Now, each one of us are here. It's a season. 2012 was my season. 2011, 2012 was my season of sitting and listening to sessions right, uh, in the Bible college. So each of us, year out, Season after season, God teaches us. 
Yes, Louis has raised his hand. Go ahead, Louis. Uh, you have a question? Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's just that um, thing of, yes, we know there are seasons, but uh, what are the, sometimes how do we know the landmarks that uh, seasons have come upon us? So you're asking what are the landmarks of... Uh, yeah, what are the landmarks that a season has come upon us? Okay, okay that's a good question. Good question. Uh, let me just mute you, Louis, because, yeah, okay. Uh, now, along the road, you know, some of us, uh, now, if you're going for a long drive, right, uh, you're riding the bike, you, you've got to go from one city to another. And as you're riding or you're driving, there's something very important. We may know the route, but you will see some things, some boards on the highways, on the road. They are called signposts. Now, as you're traveling along, there are some signposts which say, hey, no overtaking. Uh, some signposts who says, beware, there's a you know a crossing ahead or you know uh, no over speeding, no going over 60 miles an hour. Uh, so you got different signposts, right? Now, even as you prepare, uh, you and I prepare, now God, as we studied, God can speak to us in many ways, right? He can speak to us through his word. He can speak to us through a vision. He can speak to us through a dream. Uh, uh, even uh, in our personal, he can speak to, in our inner being, into our spirit. So the point is, how do we know that, okay, this season is over? Usually, a season or a transition is somewhere between four to five years. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, exactly four to five years is a transition. No. Usually, in the practical sense, four to five years is when, you know, you, you can go develop in the skills that God has or grow in that area where God has called us for. Now, how do we know, okay, now is the time of transition? God will, minister, God will speak to us in, in our heart. Now, if God is not speaking, continue, continue on in what you're doing, right? Uh, let me give you this example. Uh, after working about four years in Bangalore, one day we were praying as a family. And as, a, as we were praying, I felt in my heart that there's going to be a transition for us. I just felt it. Uh, but I never told anybody. I just kept it in my heart. Uh, uh, and then every day as I pray, I just felt, okay, God, there's something new that you're giving me. Now, just because I got that, I did not just you know leave everything and uh, sit and pray 40 days fasting. No. Continued to do what I was doing. Right, whatever God has called me to do, I was doing that. Uh, but that, that you know, that leading became stronger and stronger and stronger. And I said, okay, God, if this is you, speak to us through a vision or a dream, or give me a prophetic word, right? Or speak to me through your word. So over the course of maybe two months odd, we got a word, we got a dream. And we got a prophetic word also from a person saying that, uh, you know, there's going to be a transition in your life. And sure enough, just a, just a few weeks later, you know, uh, uh, we, had, we were asked if you are willing to move to another city and pastor the church APC uh, Mangalore. Now, the moment, you know, pastor asked me this, at that moment, I knew that this was God. I knew it. Uh, I knew because previously, about four months before, God had been speaking to me. Right? And, and the moment this opportunity came up, I knew that that was what God had for me. So I didn't have to think twice, oh, uh, you know, I have two small kids. How do I move to Mangalore? There's nobody in Mangalore. I don't know anyone. There's no family. Uh, all that is secondary. But I knew that God had called me. God, that was my opportunity. 
So, Louis, to answer your question, usually when there is when God wants to take you to a transition, He will prepare you before that. Right? He will speak to you, right? Uh, uh, through your word or any way, he will speak to you. So even if he does, when he does, write them down, pray about it, uh, right? And then at the right time, he will make a way. You know, the, the right doors will be open. Right people will come into your life. Right? Uh, another good example would be of the great apostle Paul. He had this wonderful encounter with the Lord Jesus on the road to Damascus. And he, he just shared a little bit here and there, 15 days in Jerusalem, uh, three and a half years in the wilderness. And then nobody heard about Paul. Where's this? Where's Apostle Paul? Nobody's there. There's no sign of him. He's gone to Tarsus. And for 14 years, nobody has heard of him. Right? 14 years was his season. But after 14 years, God calls Barnabas, says, go to Tarsus, get Saul of Tarsus and bring him to Jerusalem. Use him for the ministry. So we see how the transition happened. God used somebody to bring Paul out of this place of obscurity to a place of visibility. So I hope that answers your question, Dewey. Uh, yeah, very well. Thank you so much, sir. God bless. God bless. Yes, Samuel, go yes, ahead. Samuel, go ahead. Um, thank you, Pastor. Um, something that I've been sitting with uh, since the first session itself, Pastor, um, and I'm thinking probably down the line we will touch upon this. Uh, but something that keeps coming up is... Um, to recognize the difference between uh, what God is trying to prepare you for or even the season that God wants in your life um, versus um, your own desire or, you know, your your own conviction. So, so the conviction that you have, you know, to know that it's from God. So, for example, let's say, uh, you know, you want to... Uh, say lead a uh, worship ministry uh, you know and you have the strong desire in your heart that someday i will lead worship ministry and uh, you keep pressing on you keep pressing on um you know doors don't open but you don't give up on it um and uh, how do you like come to a place where you realize that uh, or you know um, at what one point is where you don't want to give up on your dream you want to keep pressing on uh, but uh, the danger of maybe there's an idol you know in you uh, that's that's kind of pushing you forward and it's it's not from god but but uh, but you're so much into it you you just you don't want to give up you just keep you you keep practicing you keep looking for opportunities <laughs> And you don't see so so does i mean so what happens in the end like do you do you eventually give up on something that you've been holding on for so long to finally realize that that's not what god has for you does i mean and and that i imagine would be something like you know i mean like if you, let's say you wait for 10 years and then you have to give up it's, it's it, it would be so hard to kind of let go of that um, or, you know, because of, uh, like, so, um, you know, if so, uh, Paul spent 17 years preparing, and that, that's a long time and he didn't give up on it. Or, or even Moses, like, he spent his entire lifetime to fulfill. So, so when do you kind of draw the line that, you know, or, or you just keep pressing, like you have something in your heart and you just keep pressing on. So, so some, some you have been sitting here. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Yes, Samuel. So, uh, here's the thing. Now, firstly, we need to see whether whatever we are planning is it in line with God's word. Does it does it deviate you? Uh, now, I'm talking about both the professional and the ministry aspect, right? So let's keep that in mind. Does it deviate you from God's call or meaning does it 
take distract you from the call of God in your life, right? Now, here's the thing. There, God, our spirit, and the Holy Spirit, you know, once we are believers, are united. The Holy Spirit speaks to our spirit. So there are times we may feel, hey, this is my own, my own thought, right? Uh, like this wonderful example you gave me, right? If you want to be a leader in the worship ministry and you've been waiting 10 years. Now, here's the thing. I would say, don't give up. Even if it's 15 years, don't give up, right? If you feel that, you know, now, for example, you don't know how to play an instrument, right? Or, or you don't, you haven't really uh, sang in church. But if we're waiting 10 years, we're waiting and saying, okay, God, I want to be a worship leader. I want to be, and we don't do anything about it. It's not going to happen, right? Uh, but then you say, okay, I want to do this. So pick up an instrument, learn and listen to songs, learn how to sing. And as you start small, you know that you're taking a step forward. Now, even as you take steps forward, I completely understand what you're saying, uh, Sammy, because we all go through that, right? Uh, say, hey, nothing's happening. Uh, it's been five years and nothing's happening. It's been 10 years. I've been you know, leading in this church with 10, 15 people, but the bigger vision is to lead, you know, be a, a worship pastor or lead the bigger church. Nothing's happening. It's, it's not that, you know, uh, God has forgotten you or anything. Continue to press on. I would say it just took a moment. Right? If you read the book of Acts, it's so wonderful. Just a moment. God told uh, Barnabas, go bring Saul of Tarsus. It, it was just a moment. right? Uh, and what happened after that? When we see after that, Barnabas did not hardly preached. Everywhere they went, in Damascus also, Paul was preaching. Barnabas was like an associate. He was sitting uh, like an assistant. And then Paul's life is more, you know, uh, written about Paul's life. Paul's, uh, the the episodes and all that he did is emphasized more in the word than Barnabas. We don't know what happened to Barnabas after uh, the first missionary journey. So what I'm trying to say is if God has if you feel that God has called you for that and you've been waiting and waiting, continue to press on. Right? Uh, somebody, uh, one of my lecturers told me this. What, what God can, what we try in 10 years, God can do it in two years. Right? We may feel, oh man, God, I'm 40 years old now. When is it going to happen? Or I'm 45, when is it going to happen? Uh, you know, I, I I thought by 35, I'll do what I what you called me to do, but now I'm 45. But whatever God, whatever we plan to do in 10 years, God can do it in five years. Uh, but again, that to decipher between, is it my own thought or is it God speaking to me? Very important thing is to see if it's in line with the word of God, if it's in line with your gifts and your calling. Right. Uh, and then, you, you, you know, there's this wonderful verse, my sheep will hear my voice. Each one of us, God will speak to us. Right? It would be through people. It will be through situations, dreams. Somehow, God will speak to us. So my answer is, Samuel, don't give up. Even if you're 60, uh, don't give up. Just continue to press on. Uh, you know, as we do that, we we, we can say, "Hey, God, uh, you, you know, I've been faithful till the end. I was faithful." Uh, so that's a wonderful experience again. So I hope that answers your question, Samuel. Thank you, thank you. But it does, it does, and um, it encourages as well. Yes, Very yes, yes. Thank Praise you. God. Yeah. Praise God. All right, let's let's move on. Uh, as we explore opportunities, as we get inputs, as we draw a plan. All of this uh, will help us fulfill those three things, the person, the place, and the purpose that God has for us. So let's move on. How do we get started in our career plans? Pray, listen, and step out. Let's read Proverbs 13 at verse 4. Yes, could one of us please read that? Proverbs 13 and verse 4. Yes, anyone? Uh, 
uh, Proverbs 13 and verse 4. Okay, I'll read. It says, this, The soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing, but the soul of a diligent shall be made rich. Amen. Thank you, Mangi. The soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing, but the soul of the diligent should be shall be made rich. Such a powerful verse, right? As we plan our career, right? Very important was don't be lazy, right? Let me give you this example that happened to me, right? I was about uh, 20 years old, uh, experienced the Lord. And I thought to myself, I am going to sit and pray the whole day. I'm going to fast and pray and sit and pray and pray and pray. And then I'll start my own ministry. And so I said, okay. So I began to pray and pray and pray the whole day. It was good for me. But then I later realized God one day was, you know, was speaking to me and said, I don't want you to do this. I want you to go and work. I said, oh, man, I, I, I was thinking, I don't want to work. I don't want to go to the IT company. And, you know, the whole eight hours goes there, then another two hours for traveling. When will I pray? So God very clearly told me, the reason you're comfortable sitting at home and praying is because you're getting lazy. There's food, breakfast, lunch, dinner. I stay in my, with my parents. So breakfast, lunch, dinner is there. The whole day of whatever you're praying, doing all that, which is good. But after praying, if you don't do anything about it, the soul of a lazy man desires, but it has nothing. And I was really convicted. I said, God, it's, uh, and I realized, you know, it's not about sitting and praying and praying the whole day and, you know, not doing anything about it. Yes, did I grow spiritually strong? Yes. But God told Adam, work in the garden. God loves when we work. God blesses the work of our hands. Right? Oh, God blessed the people of Israel as they worked, as they tilled the fields. The land flowing with milk and honey, as they began to work on it, God blessed it. Right? So preparatory work of praying, listening to God is very important. But even as we do that, step out. Because if we just desire and just plan and just you know keep thinking about it and don't act on it, we will accomplish nothing. Right? I was spending hours in prayer thinking, okay, one day I will preach, one day I will preach. Then one day I realized, hey, I don't know anything from the word. I mean, all I know is, you know, uh, Jesus had 12 disciples. Uh, uh, you know, Jonah was in the belly of the fish. Daniel was in the lion's den. And uh, that's it. I mean, I know the stories. But if I need to preach or I need to teach people, I myself need to be equipped. So it's not about praying 10 hours a day the whole day. But I also need to read the word and I need to prepare myself. I, and I realized I need to step out. I can't be sitting at home and, am I doing a good thing? Yes, I'm not doing anything sinful by sitting and praying the whole day, but I'm not acting on what God wants me to do. So then I said, okay, I'll begin to work. I began working. After a couple of years, God in his wonderful way allowed me or gave me an opportunity to study in Bible college. And I kept praying. I said, God, I need to study the word. I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, I, I know the simple stories, but I need to study the word in depth for me to be able to preach and teach to people. How can I teach somebody when I don't know myself? And so I joined the Bible college. Uh, it, was it easy? No, it was not easy. Uh, you know, it, it was it was an online. You have morning to evening classes. It was intense classes, right? So up to evening. And then after that, we would have worship time and then fasting prayers. And uh, it kept us all busy. But here's the thing. It was a time where I could step out, out of my comfort zone. But initially, it was very difficult because for over one and a half years, I was sitting at home and 
you know, not interacting with people outside. And all of a sudden I'm going out and talking to people. And uh, it was very, you know, difficult for me. But I realized I have to do this because there's a bigger vision. There's a bigger call ahead of us. So start knocking and make an entry. You know, one day one of the pastors came and said, uh, uh, you know, Paul, I've seen you leading worship in the Bible college uh, when we were in Bible college, 2011. Or, uh, I've seen you leading in the Bible college. Can you lead worship in one of the locations? That was like, okay, yes, yes, I'll do it. I, that was an opening door. That was the first opportunity. right? So what if I was only sitting at home and praying, praying, praying? Would I have got these opportunities? Opportunities don't always come to your home. We need to step out. Knock for doors to be opened. Right? Uh, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 1. Uh, I'll just read that. The preparations of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Preparations of the heart belong to man, but the answer belongs, uh, uh, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. So if an opportunity comes to you at your door, even though you did not knock, that's wonderful. But most often, we have to go through that knocking process. Do your best to prepare. Preparation is the responsibility of man. After we've prepared, after we've done our best, you leave the results up to God. Right? Sometimes the outcome may not be what we had desired. But remember, you've done your best. You left the result to God. And God is working out a plan for your life. Right? Uh, I think I shared that story with you. Uh, that story, it's a testimony of this man who, the year 2000 and I think it was 2019, early 2019, uh, he God told him to start a business with the hand sanitizers. He was like, why hand sanitizers out of all of this? Uh, but the desire was so strong in him. He said, okay, let's start. He started a small you know, uh, business after a couple of months. And then 2020, the pandemic hit and he started getting orders from all over the place. IT companies, businesses, hospitals, everywhere. So even as God, as you go knocking, God can open wonderful doors for you, right? Uh, uh, one of the things that I always, I've written down and kept on the mirror, I always, I always say this to myself, big doors open on small hinges, right? If you want a big door to open, remember there are small hinges on that door. Look for small opportunities. Keep knocking. Keep preparing. And the doors will be open. Remember Joshua and Caleb? Joshua uh, and Caleb are getting into the promised land. And all of a sudden, they come into Jericho. And there's this huge wall ahead of them. Right? Huge wall. What do we do? Joshua's, God, God says to Joshua, Whatever I tell you to do, you do. Go around that wall seven times. Go back to your camps. And they did that. And the last time when they, when they did it, the walls came crumbling down. So when we keep knocking, when we keep pressing on, God will open the right doors. If there's no door open, doesn't mean that God is not answering our prayer. Doesn't mean that God is not hearing us. There's no door open. God wants us to press on. God wants us to wait in the place we are. Maybe the transition is not yet there. Maybe God is asking us to hold on. Not yet. I can picture Moses. And I'll close with this. Moses knew in his heart that he was going to bring the people of Israel out of Egypt. Maybe he's sitting there when he was 40, 45 years old, looking after his father-in-law's sheep, thinking, I was the one who was supposed to go and bring the people out of Egypt. But now I made a mistake and I'm here looking after sheep when I'm supposed to be the leader 
45, 50, 55, 60, maybe 60, he lost his hope. He said, okay, forget about it. This is my calling, looking after sheep. But when he was 80, God reminded him through the burning bush saying, you are not a shepherd. You are a man who is going to bring the people out of Egypt. That's what you, you are going to do. Even as we wait, as we were sharing with Samuel, don't give up. Even if we give up, God in, the, in those seasons of giving up, he will remind us, hey, I've got the bigger picture here. I've got the blueprint. Just, just hold fast. Just continue to be strong. Continue to be faithful. I'm going to lead you. All right. So let's close today's class. Uh, 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 we'll meet tomorrow and we'll continue from where we stopped. Right. God bless. Have a great day ahead.